If you're starting out with Linux, chances are you might be a bit lost in certain areas. Whether you're trying to learn the command line, how to customize your desktop, how to use Linux on your server, or how to play games on it, everything might feel different to what you're used to. And so I felt it was a good idea to look at various online resources that I personally used or that I looked at and can recommend to help you during your Linux journey. Because after all, if you manage to find what you're looking for, chances are you will stick with Linux, which makes the community grow, which is always a good thing. So we'll look at websites, databases, YouTube channels, podcasts, and more on most topics you might want to learn about. And of course, if you have other cool resources that you use and you want to share, well, you're welcome to write a comment and to let everyone benefit. And in the meantime, I'll let you know about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Chasm Workspaces, a great project for streaming apps, operating systems, and desktops straight to your browser. They just released version 1.15, which adds support for multiple monitors for your Linux desktop, along with a redesigned control panel to enhance the mobile workspace experience. Additional updates include session recording, OpenStack auto-scaling, enhanced multi-factor authentication, and new images for Fedora, Alpine, Parrot OS, and even the Redroid Android emulator. This update makes it easier than ever to host on-demand access to your desktops and applications. The Chasm Workspaces Community Edition can be self-hosted, or they also have a cloud software as a service subscription. To learn more about Chasm Workspaces, click the link in the description. Okay, so first, where can you go if you want to deepen your general knowledge of Linux, its architecture, and the various systems that it uses? One solid entry point is the Arch Wiki. It's meant for Arch Linux, as in the instructions it gives are tailored for Arch, but it's also a gold mine of general information about virtually every system you might want to know more about. For example, if you're confused about System D and how to use it, the Arch Wiki will tell you what it is, what it does, and some general usage tips to help you get to grips with it. Some things will definitely be Arch specific in there, so if you don't run Arch, do not blindly run commands from there. But it's a good resource to better understand how the various components of a Linux system work together. I don't use Arch, by the way, but I do use their wiki to learn more about specific systems or find a quick fix for certain things that will work no matter the distro you run them on. I'm not saying you should run Arch, but you should definitely use the knowledge that they've gathered. Now, if you have ever used Duolingo to try and learn a new language, you might like this website. It's called Linux Journey, and it breaks down a lot of what you need to learn in various categories as you mature and understand things better. So with the Grasshopper set of courses, you can learn the general basics of the command line, managing packages, processes, users, and more. And then you can move on to learning about how to handle devices, logs, networking, basically everything. It's a pretty verbose website, meaning it's mostly text to explain how things work. But you do get some small exercises to try with a quiz question. It is not the deepest set of exercises, but it does give you a solid overview of the basics of your Linux system. Now, this one is not for the faint of heart. It's Linux from scratch. Seriously, don't run away. It's going to consume months of your life because it's basically a distro where you have to compile everything yourself bit by bit. It's a project you should undertake as a hobby. But once you've actually managed to build your entire system from scratch, with the help of the Linux from scratch book, available for free of course, you will know everything about how a Linux system works and is built and its various components. I will freely admit I never completed a Linux from scratch install. I actually stopped at compiling glibc because I just did not have the time to do it. But if you really want to go in depth into every single bit of your system, then it's probably the best way to learn about it. Do note that it's going to be very time consuming. You're not just going to whip that out in an afternoon. You have to use it as a hobby project to learn how things work. And finally, you also have free courses on the Linux Foundation's website. They cover a lot of things, from the basics of open source licenses to kernel development, developing software on Linux, cybersecurity, and more. One I would recommend is the introduction to Linux, or LFS 101X. 
You will have to create an account and it's more of a structured course, like an e-learning thing over multiple weeks, but it's very comprehensive. So if you tend to perform better in a more structured environment, it is a good one. Now let's look at various resources focused on specific topics. One thing a lot of people go into Linux for is the command line and learning how this works can be a bit tricky, especially if you have no prior experience with any non-graphical way to use a computer. Now, if you prefer to learn by following along a nice little tutorial, Linux Survival is a handy website. It will take some time to go through, but it explains things really well, with all the basics of navigating the file system, interacting with files, permissions, disks, or processes. It's really just the fundamentals of the command line, but it has all you need to get started. Now, the interface is not super pretty, but it works. If you don't care about exercises, but you just want the theory and the explanations, linuxcommand.org is also a very good website to get started. It also covers more in-depth stuff like writing shell scripts, which is something you might like to learn as well. Now, if you're looking for deep dives into one specific command or tool, then there are two YouTube channels I would recommend. The first one is Learn Linux TV. It's probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, English-speaking Linux channels. And they have a ton of tips for Linux, plus some reviews as well. There are a huge number of well-crafted videos about specific tools that you might want to learn about. You can use the little search icon on the channels page to look for the specific command you're interested in. The second channel is Veronica Explains, and it's also full of nice lessons about specific tools and command line utilities, plus some general Linux-related topics as well. It's a more recent channel with less videos, but it's still a very nice one to follow. Now, you can find a ton of resources about specific command line utilities on YouTube or on Peertube, but these are two channels I reference often when I need to learn about something new, which is very often, and also when I need to refresh my knowledge on something, which is also very often, because I forget everything. Now, if you like to learn with something more akin to a game, then there's Terminus. It's basically a choose-your-own-adventure game, but using Linux terminal commands to navigate, like ls to show where you can go, less to get details about an item, and cd to move somewhere else. It's not really going to teach you all that much, but it's pretty fun if you like these types of old text-based adventure games, and also it's gonna make it look like you're working when you're gaming. And to test your knowledge in more practical exercises, you have Command Challenge. It will give you instructions to follow with quick exercises and, of course, potential solutions when clicking the little arrow next to the prompt. It's a really nice way to test what you've actually learned. And it also made me realize by making this video that my knowledge of specific commands is very, very superficial. Now, if you want to learn more about a specific Linux desktop environment, then the main resource you'll want is the actual help pages for that desktop. All of them have a help center that will give you the very basics of how to use the desktop. For KDE, you can get much deeper into the various settings with the KDE user base wiki. It's not always entirely up to date because KDE changes very often. And with Plasma 6, I'm sure there's a lot of work to make things more current, but it is still a good resource to learn more about specific features of your desktop and what you can do with it. With GNOME, it's less of an issue because it is very simple and you can explore it by yourself. For tiling window managers, you can refer to either the GitHub repos, which generally have a nice detailed rundown on how to customize and use them, for example, for Sway. i3 has its own documentation website with everything you need to know. Hyperland has a master tutorial covering everything as well. And of course, looking on YouTube for KD or GNOME tips, KD or GNOME applications and tutorials, you will find plenty of resources there. I actually made a bunch of these videos myself, I still do from time to time, but there are plenty of other channels that cover these desktops. Now, if what you want to learn about is how to customize that desktop by changing its layout, its theme, or adding extra features, I can only recommend the Linux Scoop channel. They make detailed tutorials on how to change the appearance of GNOME and KDE to something else. And even if you don't want to end up with the exact same result, it will still teach you a lot about how to install GNOME extensions, Plasma themes, Quantum themes, widgets, icon themes, and more. You can just follow along any of their tutorials, and by the end, you will know exactly how to apply your own customizations to get to the results you want. 
Now, if you think your default Linux desktop just doesn't look super good, chances are there's a video on Linux Scoop that has an end result that fits your needs, at least in terms of theming, but sometimes also in terms of layout. For more inspiration, you also have Unix porn on Reddit, but this mostly seems focused on tiling window managers, so it might not be for everyone. Now for Linux gaming, there are plenty of resources out there. First, to stay up to date on everything, there's the Gaming on Linux website. It's the most comprehensive one out there with all the latest news about the Steam Deck, general Linux gaming, how certain games run on Linux, and the various developments in that space. Then you have ProtonDB. It is the database to know if a game runs on Linux or not. It covers only Steam games that run with Proton, but that's 99% of games. You can check if a game works and the various tweaks people are suggesting to improve the experience if that's needed. And after that, you can look into other tools like Bottles, the Heroic Launcher or Lutris, but these are pretty self-explanatory and you don't really need a guide on how to use them or install them. Just visit their website. I actually made a video, which is a complete guide on how to set up Linux gaming, but it's pretty old now and it might be completely outdated. If what you want to focus on is what's happening in the Linux and open source world, like general news and updates, there are a ton of resources out there as well. For updates on what is going on in the Linux development world and the progress of various Linux and open source projects, Brody has it all. He makes videos about every day on the latest topics, developer conversations, and the general progress of various important projects. It's a fantastic channel to get your finger on the pulse of the Linux community. For podcasts, you have Destination Linux, a weekly show covering the latest major news stories in the Linux and open source world, plus some interviews. It is not just for experienced Linux users either, it stays very legible and accessible. And for more in-depth coverage of every single one of these issues, you have the best source out there. Trust me, bro, it's my own audio podcast. Yes, I do make that. It's a 40-minute weekly affair where I basically talk about the same topics as the Linux and open source news videos, but in more detail with more topics and with more opinions. I also make a daily version of this show for Patreon members and YouTube members. You can access that by any tier, like $1 a month is fine, you'll get that. But yeah, if you're tired, like me, of hearing my stupid voice and my French accent, maybe that's not for you. Now, as per Linux news websites, good resources are OMG Ubuntu and OMG Linux, the former I've been following basically since it was created back when I started using Linux. You also have Linuxiac, a great source of news and information about Linux and open source. And of course, Foronix for more benchmarks and development-focused updates. These are sources that I browse virtually every day and that I can definitely recommend if you want to learn more about what's happening in the Linux world. And for the latest news about GNOME and KDE, they have weekly posts and updates with the This Week in GNOME and This Week in KDE series of posts. They will tell you everything you need to know about how these projects are evolving. So that's about it. I didn't teach you anything here. The internet is a gold mine of resources to learn about everything you want. These are also just resources that I found useful during my Linux journey. That is not the extent of what you can find. So of course, do not hesitate to recommend other good information sources that you use so everyone can benefit. Just leave a comment. And in the meantime, I'll just let you know about today's sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. If you need a new device and you plan to run Linux on it and you want to support companies that actually contribute to Linux's growth and development, why not take a look at the computers made by Tuxedo Computers? They're based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world and they have a big range of devices that ship with Linux pre-installed. All the hardware was picked because it's very compatible with Linux. They actually submit patches upstream to fix issues that they encountered. And if those patches haven't been accepted yet, they even have repos that let you install those fixes and patches on other distributions than the one that they pre-installed. All their devices are also very customizable, especially on the laptop side of things. You can have your own custom keyboard layout, your own logo engraved on the lid. You can open all the laptops, repair them and upgrade them. So if you need a new computer, you want to run Linux on it and you don't want to give your money to a company that just supports Windows, click the link in the description below and try out Tuxedo Computers. It's all I use these days to run the channel and to game and they're really good. 
So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of links in the description to do just that. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.